Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, this is Explain Homestuck to an Old Guy. Guess which role I play. <laughs> and I confess to you that I am totally ignorant of anything about Homestuck. I have remained, I have worked very hard to find out nothing. If I would say at this point my one uh, idea about Homestuck is that it involves wearing candy corn on your head. <laughs> I don't know what, it's a religion. So, we are gonna have, this is a contest. There are rules to every contest. All right, the first rule is drink moxie. <laughs> How many people here know what moxie is? Oh, I have some disappointing news for you. What? Rule two, you can only use words and gestures in your explanation, there will be no drawing. You cannot refer to anything that culturally happened after 1995. Okay, I, I did set the bar exactly where I wanted it. Extra credit is given for interpretive dance. Okay. Feel free to insult the judge. This is literally true. Remember, I have been insulting people professionally since before you were born. A brief introduction. My name is Konstantin von Hoffman. I am a professional journalist and a former stand-up comic. You have been warned. <laughs> By the way, no points deducted for insulting the judge. Okay, don't feel that that will, uh, that will. So the way this is going to work. I am going to try and use technology, which in itself will be amusing. <laughs> okay, this is one of those fancy wireless mics. I have seen the professionals use them. I would like everybody who wants to try their hand at giving an explanation to line up over there. I just want you to hand them the mic one at a time. Okay. Uh, whenever I get irritated. All right, and you can join the line as this goes on. Yes. All right, questions from the audience. I'm going to need a time limit. The time limit is when I get cranky, in which case you all get negative five seconds. Um, the final rule is thanks and just shut the hell up. Keep your ball off my lawn. Um, all right, so. Uh, Contestant number one, your name for whatever purpose you care to give it. William. William. That is a boring name, William. Sorry. <laughs> All right. That's just my personality. All right, let's hear it. Tell me about what the heck a Homestuck is. Homestuck is a webcomic written by Andrew Husty. Map <laughs> webcomic. Oh. Homestuck is a comic based on the World Wide Web, a thing of the future. <laughs> Bam! We had dial-up in 1995. Don't make me go AOL on you. <laughs> All right, keep going, keep going. It was written by the man Andrew Hussey to describe four children playing video games together that causes the apocalypse. <laughs> I'm still not getting over the, uh, the, the, you know, the candy corn stuck on the head, but keep going. What that is, is, the premise is, the Earth itself was created by 12 aliens called trolls. Um, they're a species like, can you stand up? Yeah. <laughs> that is what a troll is. All right, that's your final out. That was not a gesture or a word. Thank you, William. <laughs> Okay, remember, interpretive dance, extra points. Yes, Martha Graham, whatever you like. Um, you know, if you can do some Cirque du Soleil, get major extra points. And your name, ma'am, is? Kathy. Kathy. That is a nice name. I have a, a cousin and an aunt named that, so I will try not to insult you too badly. Same person? Oh. oh. Too bad you're not up there. I would give you points on that one. That's good. <laughs> Okay, 
Like, you do definitely get extra points for a good insult, okay? <laughs> Ma'am. Well, Paul Stokes is a story about four friends who play a game, and the game is something like a simulation in that they can build and play with each other's houses. So it's the three little pigs. <laughs> four, there are four. Four little pigs. The Nina, the Pinto, the Santa Maria, and the one that fell off. Okay. And it's something like an RPG, and that they go on quests. And yes, we had RPGs. Stop that. <laughs> they go on quests and try to get treasures and gain levels and stuff like that. Okay. But when they start playing the game, they launch an apocalypse that will wipe out all life on Earth. Until um, unless they can get everyone into playing the game on time. This we called the Carter administration, but keep going. <laughs> and I was playing D and D during the damn Carter administration, you punks. <laughs> Oh, you are all so impressed. You know, when they put the A in AD&D, &D, okay, that was news. It, pe it spread very slowly because we were using smoke signals, but yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Kathy. So, it's also the story of the 12 kids who played the game before them in another universe. Because the goal of this game, the, the end point, the final prize, is you create a universe. And, and it's going to be, you know, great and beautiful, and you're going to get to move into it and be the gods. Higgs boson. I get to refer to things after 1995. Yeah, yeah I cheat. You knew that. Um, so you get to invent a universe. You start in an RPG, four people with candy corn on their head. There's no candy corn. These people are just trolling me. You're welcome. <laughs> the 12 kids who played before were the trolls. That's why they're in another universe. They're now from our universe. No trolls in our universe. No, but... The why, are there, why are there no trolls in our universe? They haven't figured out a way to connect them. Orcs? <laughs> in the RPG, yes. If once they start playing the game, they're fighting in... That's good, because I find orcs are very important. I paint a lot of them. It's, it's very key. There's a ton. Every time somebody new enters the game, Whatever they entered the game with basically becomes a, an enhancement to the mind. That was there. That, did you see that? That was interpretive dance, okay? That was very nice. So the monsters with the... keep getting bigger and more impressive. Okay, I'm going to halt you there. You were disappointingly true to the rules um, and even clear. Yeah. Um, this is not comedy fodder, but it does score you a lot of points. Thank you, Kathy. Senor One Eye. Forget it, that's your name. <laughs> okay, go ahead, Senor. Okay. I like this. So, basically, as the people before me were saying. Map, they're all after 1995. <laughs> I am not. I wasn't questioning your age. All right, so you got one map. Apparently maps count for something. I have a very, very careful uh, scoring profile worked out here. I bet they count for more points. Map. <laughs> so Homestuck is a comic about a game, and this game is a lot like Super Mario Brothers. You could go out and get yourself a copy. And... Um, question, ruling from the judge, did we have Super Mario Brothers in the... Yes, thank you. <laughs> Yeah, I, I was alive then, but my memory is still just what my memory is, so we do go to... I have a, I have a close third party uh, who is here ready to check my uh, rulings. Thank you. So say someone moseys on to the GameStop and gets themselves uh, Super Mario Brothers, and then they go and play the game, and eventually, when you play I'm this game, mm -hmm. you're going to get yourself into this enemy called Bowser. And everyone who plays... Bowser? Yes. That so they stole this... From Mario Brothers, okay. I'm still talking about Mario Brothers. Okay, I got that. All right. It's a simile. So. It's a simile. That's true. He has not used like or, yeah, okay, like or what? Yeah, okay. It's a comparison. It's a comparison. I know why he meant what he meant for. 
Thank you, Groucho Marx. You gotta understand, some people are better at playing Super Mario Brothers than other people. So Bowser is harder for people than, you know, for other people. So some people it's easier. Now, with Homestuck, there is also a similar villain to Bowser called Jack Noir. Now, Jack Noir. Yes. He's spelled N-O-I-R. Uh, yeah, I know how Noir is spelled. Jack Noir, yes. It, it, for those of you who, who weren't alive back then, there's a, a fascinating uh, type of film. Yeah, um, so, uh, all right. So he spent 30 seconds figuring out the name of this villain. Yep, okay. Okay, so when everyone with their own individual copy of Spurb, that's the name of the game that they play in Homestuck that causes the whole mess. Spurb. S-P-U-R-B, Spurb. Okay. So, I'm not missing anything on that reference, am I, that he was just trying to get something by me? Okay. I, I'm all right. The other thing you should try and do is make me interested in Homestuck. Okay, keep going. <laughs> okay, so when you progress through the game and you get to Jack Noir, you realize something about the fellow. Oh my goodness. That he has a lot of sperm. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then you see, the things that I used to help myself, to help me win the game, those are what made Jack Noir stronger. So I have to fight him too. Remember? Wait, uh, no, you lost me. <laughs> we we went from the things that you made to fight the game or something. Okay. Don't feel that losing me is a bad thing, by the way. I, I you know. So as you go through the game, you use these things to help you, and these very things power up Jack, so he's harder to beat. Now. So he has more spurb. He has much more spurb. <laughs> That, I mean, I'm sorry, that's like fifth grade humor, all right? We're not going, we're going to call it Spurb, okay? <laughs> Spurb with candy corn. I've got it. So, okay, so, so a homestuck is Spurb with candy corn, which is really gross. <laughs> that's probably how candy corn are made, now that I think of it. <laughs> okay, now the trolls, I don't eat them. When the trolls were playing this game, they had no problem with Jack. They were able to beat him. But when they made the, hum the humans universe and the humans started to play the game, they powered up Jack so much that absolutely no one can beat him. Okay, thank you very much. Good job. I do, no, I'm, I just interrupt people at random. Come on, give him a hand. He explained sperm to me. I'm 52 and have a kid and I needed somebody to explain sperm, okay. <laughs> Suburb? It doesn't matter how you pronounce it. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to go on record. Do you want to know my name? Yes, I don't have a quick nickname for you. I'm Nicholas. Nicholas. Oh, bad. That's the name of my father. I'm sorry. That's five demerits right there. Okay. Um, okay. First of all, I don't know what these guys are talking about because that, that's n none of that was right at all. Okay. First of all, uh, but, but more importantly, more importantly, uh, the essence of Homestuck really is about the purpose of Homestuck, which, as has been previously mentioned, is to create a universe. Now, to accomplish this, Doctor Manhattan, again, <laughs> post 1995. Thank you. But didn't fall for it. Damn it. Okay, come on. Uh, basically, in order to do this. The game is less of a game and more of a tool to create a new universe. So you're a tool. Yes, I am. <laughs> I feel the same way. I am a tool in the universe. Mongo just pawn in tool of universe. In a way, yes. That didn't make players. sense. Never mind. Think of it like universes as organisms reproducing. We're back to the sperm metaphor. <laughs> okay, sperm. sperm is just the name of the game. It probably means something, but I don't really know what that is. Point is, it's a reproductive system of the universe, and for this to work... And you want me to forget about sperm. <laughs> you are trying to tell me the universe has a reproductive system. How big does it have urethra problems? <laughs> I mean, are they... No, it's, it's actually got a lot of problems, considering it needs the help of... of uh, completely unrelated creatures in order to help reproduce, but that's, that's another that's topic what... altogether. Uh, starting from a, a standpoint, in order for the universe to reproduce, 
It needs to be, it needs to have genetics, just like any living creature would. That's not where I start, but okay. <laughs> From a scientific standpoint. All right. It needs to have genetics. But to get these genetics, what has plenty of genetics in it already? Sperb. <laughs> aside from sperm. That's the whole point of it. Aside from aside we we had DNA back in 1994. Aside from the obvious reference to bodily fluids, which is getting very old. Uh, I'm 52. You have no idea what really old is like. Granting that's true. If you aren't careful, we will start discussing my prostate issues. All right. <laughs> No, well, you, get, you just got points and you haven't even gotten up here. <laughs> Duly noted, point is, to create the universe, it needs the species, a species that is coming of age in the universe. A species that hits puberty in the universe. In a way, yes, that's actually it's, a good Its voice is breaking, when zits, doesn't know how to talk to people it's attracted to. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And it begins I wasn't from, going there. from the standpoint of the comic, it begins from the prospect of four uh, 13 year olds who are also coming of age. So they enter the game, right? And as previously mentioned, the boss is powered up by something entered in the game. Now I feel like that wasn't explained very well. Uh, yeah, that would be that would be quite correct. I'm still not sure whether or not that's a good or bad thing though. Think of it like when you start the game, a DM, kind of, but they don't dictate the rules, they just explain things to you, right? But so it's they, like the voices in my head. <laughs> it's, a little, it's a little bit like that, and much like the voices that are probably in your head, they take the forms of random objects lying around your house. <laughs> no, just my pug talks to me. I, I... A pug is a good example. Say, for example... A pug is always a good example. <laughs> we will not say anything ill of pugs that will disqualify you. <laughs> get this thing to actually explain things to you in a good way, you need to put things in it that will make it talk to you. Say, for example, your pug. One of the characters... I'm putting my pug into something. It turns, and your pug would be able to talk and explain the game to you. What do you mean, will be able to? Would be able to. <laughs> what do you mean, would be able to? This, if you enter the game, which is obviously not going to happen because I did say coming of age... <laughs> As I noted, a good insult. I love a good insult. So hypothetically speaking, you could put any object you wanted into this, which is called a sprite, like a fairy, kind of, and it explains the game to you. Now, the final foe that you have to fight in this game inherits certain traits of what you put in your sprite. Okay, thank you. Good job. Woo! Now, wait a minute. I need you to proceed, because I have got the general idea, correct me if I'm wrong, and I know you will, and I know I will be, we have a game. We have an RPG type game. Yes. There are four people in it. Yes. They are 13, God help us all. <laughs> I do remember what being 13 was like, and I'm really sorry for anybody who else has. Okay, so we, and there, there are other people in another universe who created them somehow, or they created, they won the game, so they created the human universe. And now they're trying to help these kids beat the game. Okay. To some extent. All right, but you don't have a nickname yet, so because we are as one, you are going to be uh, Team Titan. <laughs> <laughs> Team. <laughs> what were you expecting? She's gonna win. All she has on is a panda hat. She doesn't. She has no idea what the homestuckness is, and she's gonna win. All right. I'm sorry, Team Titan. So take it from this point that we have people in another universe who are helping someone with an RPG, because apparently the rules are really complex. And like. When they get into the game, they can't get out of it until they beat it. I've been in this game. <laughs> it, oh no, I've been in this game. It's a whiny guy who lived down the street from me and you could not get him to go away no matter what. Are you kidding? He made all his damn saving throws and even the GM was trying to kill him. <laughs> I apologize. 
Okay. So if you die in the game, you die in real life. That kind of removes the game element, but okay. Yeah. All right. Basically, everything kind of been said. All right. Thank you, Team Titan. Okay. Team, the Zodiac is so 70s. Okay, so 70s is your nickname. Um, Should I explain uh, the Zodiac? Oh, no, 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 no. No, it's part of the story. It's how you pick up whichever person you are no, interested no, in. there's a reason. There is a homestuckness of the Zodiac. Exactly. The, zo the Zodiac has a homestuck. Yes. What is the symbol of the homestuck Zodiac? Um, well, there's... Which, I mean, does it come between Libra and Cancer? No, no, no. Do no. I get Cancer? <laughs> How many of you are hoping I get Cancer? Oh, I'll remember that, Matt. Well, control, their character. And an extra point. Okay. Each troll, the character has a zodiac symbol on their, um... Well, on their shirt. That's a really original idea, I have to say. You've got 12 characters, we're going to put Zodiac. He didn't even go for the Chinese Zodiac, right? So, I'm sorry, this is not scoring points with me as an idea. Now, I also need to remind you, you have to tell me why I should pay attention, why I should be interested, other than that there apparently is a doctor who will help me with my prostate. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Well, the reason you should pay attention to Homestuck is that it is when it's a defining um, piece of art from the genre or from the webcomic genre. But defining piece of art. Yes. It. Wait, wait, wait. I think defining piece of art. I think graphic novels. I think Mouse. Any. People who've read Mouse, Watchmen, you know, the defining, they have a deep significance. Um, Spider-Man, who was born the same year I was, and will you never see us in the same place? Uh, just saying. Um, so, defining piece of art, and because I can refer to this and cheat, I will. For me, the defining piece of art in webcomics is XKCD. So you are postulating that the Candy Corn comic RPG is up there with XKCD. A, a comic that is about... What is an inside joke? It's an inside joke. Yeah. Based on a former webcomic by... <laughs> All right, so we're dealing with an inside joke. This is not a great way to get me involved, but I'm, I'll keep, keep going, so 70s. <laughs> Very well. Well, it used, Homestuck uses every piece of, well, every medium that it possibly can to tell the story. It uses uh, well, basic text, starting with basics. It uses videos, even uh, video games. Um, okay, why? Come on, give me something. Give me, come on, make it interesting. I'm, I'm dying here, I'm dying. I'm trying to, trying to give you credit here. I need something that makes me gonna go, yeah, I have to read this. Mind you, I'm the guy who reads Rise and Fall of the Third Reich for fun, so. In eighth, yes, I was there at the time, very funny. Oh, now we're going to pick on my last name, all right. We need better jokes. All right, so 70s, I'm going to let you pass the baton. All right, a hand for so 70s. Anyone who's brave enough to wear, all right, we have uh, we have kind of hipster guy, I would say. I'd also tip smart ass. But... Oh, you wish. Yeah. You gotta earn that one here, baby. I can. Kathy has smart ass. Okay, you gotta make you you gotta make that level now. Okay. So here is why Homestuck is so popular and why it is a work of art. Those are two opposite things. You do realize that. <laughs> Avatar and Titanic are tremendously popular. Thank you. Nobody is going. Yeah. Oh, wait. But wait. It's a work of art. Hey, I'm sure Avatar is actually. May I continue? 
Avatar was great. I had only seen that movie eight to 20 times before. Dancing with wolves, anybody? Yes. Insulting indigenous people, anybody? All right, so. I'm talking, wait, we're not talking about the cartoon? Oh, no, no, I would never bring up the cartoon. The blue alien. The blue alien. All right, wait, 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 let's go back. Let's go back to my man, Mr. Hipster. Okay, here's what you need to understand about Homestuck. You can't understand it because the artist, the author and artist, same person, is intentionally fucking with his audience when he writes this. I say that because... I feel the same way about Michael Bay movies. I'm not... <laughs> And Independence Day is a great movie. Just not, oh, Roland Emmerich, Michael Bay, you're telling me they're different people? All right, Pacific Rim was Michael Emmerich? Okay. Oh, good, I'm driving them away. They won't get pissed. Bye, sorry, we weren't funnier. Thank you. Um, I blame all of them. It's a great thing about being old is you can always blame the youngsters. Mr. Hipster, please return. Andrew Hussey goes out of his way to make sure that his comic is incomprehensible by using both a strange internal logic that you can't quite get at first, but makes sense as it keeps repeating. And he also, perhaps the best way to describe Homestuck is if you mix Alice in Wonderland with uh, James Joyce's Ulysses. Because Have you read Ulysses? I tried to read Ulysses. Okay, me too. I was just wondering. <laughs> Didn't get very far. All right. So you have given me a you have given me a piece of information while illuminating doesn't actually tell me anything, and I approve of that because I am a professional journalist. <laughs> so I need, but I need more explanation. I, I need a little less art criticism here and more explanation. How about I explain why these people love Homestuck? Well, they're here to explain for themselves. Why do you Homestuck? I do it because of the interaction that it offers. Because the you don't have a girlfriend or boy oh! or boyfriend. I don't mean to be. This is. I. I apologize. I have made a cruel, cruel assumption, which is that he is a. Never mind. <laughs> Thank you. That's all I ask. <laughs> You're doing great. <laughs> The, what people have failed to mention, they've described the plot as well as you can, but the format of the comic is that of a text adventure, which was before 1995. Oh, it definitely was. I hated them. Yeah. <laughs> I was alive then. Shut up. <laughs> oh, you're in a forest. There is something. It's a lot of fun as a game today, all right? But it's like... You go, you spend three hours just trying to find, pick up the sword. What sword? <laughs> you didn't mention a sword? <laughs> exactly. Now imagine that, but you can make up whatever the hell you want. You tell, the author asks you to just input commands and he will do whatever you say. To they point. promise that, but they never do. And the comic he wrote former to this, one of the most- Up, up, up. Sticking to the homestuckness. Okay. That is quite difficult just because he makes so many references to his prior comic. Yeah, uh, but it... I'm I then we will have to go into another panel called Explain the Prior Comic to the Clueless Old Guy. Okay, fair enough. But one very popular command was ride whatever like a mechanical bowl. And he would actually drive draw someone riding any object like a mechanical bowl. So you all like to ride mechanical bowls. <laughs> I'm asking you, all right? He says it's popular, I believe him. No, yes, mechanical bull. Okay, thank you. I believed you, I just wanted to find out. But the point I'm trying to say is, this is a comic that makes it feel like we can contribute to the story, the creation. There's even a thriving fan community to it where people can make music albums and he'll host it on the site. Okay. All right. Mr. Hipster, that was a very good job, despite my best attempts to rattle you. So, Mr. Hipster, ladies and gentlemen. Hello. All right. 
you get extra credit for blue, for the Milady Blue here, and you do have just got the best nickname, all right, but you lose for those some of those points for the zodiac symbol. I'm sorry, that's just the way it is. Um, but Milady Blue is, we will all agree, the best nickname so far. So, Milady Blue. Would you mind if I explain this in a useful number? Mind would be a gross understatement. I would be honored. <laughs> when you think about Homestuck, it's really a complex environment. If you think about it, it's really relatable for people our age. With a bunch of kids, even though they're gonna die, still you think about it. Each one of them has a quality we have, and then later, the trolls, even though they're like Doctor Who's Monster of the Week, you can see that we each have a quality. Why you see I'm even dressed as one? What you know is that each one Every character has a special place in our heart to really <laughs> You may not understand what's going on, but at least you enjoy the ride. Drop the bag. That was superb. Unfortunately, I do have to mark you down for a few points because you have actual talent, all right? Um, I, I frown on that oh because it gives people an ugly comparison and they start notice my noticing my lack thereof. But ladies and gentlemen, once again, Milady Blue. Oh, no, no, no. There's more than one prize here, folks. You gotta humiliate me first. There's more than, there are plenty of prizes to go around. And remember, I'm cranky. I might not reward people just for talent and skill and, you know, bravery and stuff like that. Finally, I have My... to something. <laughs> All right, Ms. Portal. Oh, good name, nickname is Eddie. Okay. I'm not going to pretend that Homestuck is some great masterpiece, the statement of a generation or anything. The fact is, Homestuck is a really a lot like a road trip movie. I mean, one of those really bizarre ones, okay? That ends up with people going to like the biggest taco in the USA. We you called that prom night, but okay. <laughs> it's a bit like prom It's night. in San Antonio, the taco, okay. It, it's a bit like prom night I have too, no idea. and you feel mostly like you're drunk. Anyways, but Homestuck... No, no, I didn't feel mostly like I was drunk, <laughs> all right? I felt mostly like I was sane. I was drunk. <laughs> well, you don't feel sane either. But Homestuck is a lot like a road trip movie, because most of the time, you have no idea what's going on. Lots of things are just there, and you just gotta go with it. The fact is, people like Homestuck because they can relate to the characters. And while we might not have any idea what is- Can they relate to the trolls or the 13 year olds? Or the 13 year olds? 13 years old, sir. All of them. Well, sir, the trolls are 13 years old. Yeah. Okay, that, thank you. It's weird. All right, where, when they hit 13, like where do the secondary, social, where do the secondary sexual characteristics? Sir, that is a very- Some of them have wounds and some of them don't. Okay, that's as, and that is as close to detail as I want on this topic. I was just curious. Excellent, because I'm not going to explain it to you. Underarm hair, that's the other one I feel safe asking about. Uh, unclear. Unclear, all right, so we don't know if they're French. Okay, so continue, uh, Ms. Portal. Despite we, us not having any idea what's going on, we enjoy it. Because sometimes you look at weird things, like, I don't know, those pictures of people doing random things. Like, do you know the one with the guy with the apple? Uh, 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 I have no idea what is, oh, you're making a reference to Marcel Duchamp? Yes. Bravo. You know, you don't really understand. 
understand it, but you can Oh no, Renee McGrid. Sorry, I apologize. <laughs> but you can enjoy it for the fact that it's weird and it's also a bit and it's also quite nice to look at. Like I mean a lot of Homestuck has some really good animation. And while it might not be the best out there, you still enjoy it. So while you might This sounds so much like the nineteen ninety two presidential election, it's scary. <laughs> It's not the best out there, but you know, it's got some good jokes, so we're going with that. I think that election just was a joke. Did it cover you as well? But, and, did, it, did you say, did it cover me as well? Wait, what? The best, but, the but the point okay. is, we don't have any idea what's going on. Only, only idiots pretend to. But the fact is, we enjoy it, we like the characters, and, and honestly, who needs common sense when the author is possibly a centaur? <laughs> there you go. Has, has anybody ever heard of or read a comic called Zippy the Pinhead? Oh, yeah. I've never heard of it. Yes. I've heard of Pinhead Larry, though. No, Zippy the Pinhead. You should... You really have to go read Zippy the Pinhead. I will, uh, I will require this. If you want stuff that doesn't make sense, has gorgeous art, and makes references to things you'll never understand. Oh, that does sound like Homestuck. There you go. Except it was in, you know, uh, they used to call them newspapers. I don't know what you refer to them anymore. I'm sorry, ma'am. I'm trying to come up with a nickname. Pinkie Pie. <laughs> Pinkie Pie is the best pony, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> party cannon, party cannon, there you go. She's getting points. She's getting points for the party cannon. All right, Pinkie Pie. Look, I could have gone Adventure Time, but that would have been obvious, all right? Okay. Well, I mean, Homestuck is something you don't understand. I'm gonna start off Well, we now. started out, we we could have saved a lot of time. Homestuck <laughs> is something you're never going to understand, so there's really no point in trying to, to this explain this whole panel. You. There you go. But I can try anyway. I respect the there's no point in explaining it to me. I can me. try anyway. All right. I mean, I, 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 I lost track of what everyone was talking about because I was in my own little world. <laughs> okay. It was super senpai. <laughs> and I know that... Um, I'm pretty sure people were talking about the first half, so I'm just going to say you're never going to understand the second half. Okay. Nobody understands the second half. Twin Peaks, anyone? Oh, I, don't think <laughs> okay. I don't think anyone understands it. Yeah, the collected works of David Lynch. There we go. Thank you. All right. I, I mean, I know I heard you talking about the Zodiac signs. Yeah. And I, I just want to start off by saying they're not candy corn. As much as they look like candy corn, and I know you want to eat it on their head, they're not. The zodiac signs. I don't. The zodiac signs are not candy corn. I'm sorry. I, well, I'm sorry. I know, but you're being amusing. I give you a lot of credit for that. I'm I, sorry. I'm like. I, I know. The time I was standing in line. I was getting. You're overheated. just. Yeah. You're I'm overheated. Like, you're stunned by my stupidity. I understand. No. I'm, Trust me. I have a 17-year-old son. I'm used I to this. I tried explaining it to my own grandparents, and they never understood. Oh, I'm old enough to be a grandparent. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You just remind I'll me. I'll just be crying. Oh, I remind you, you remind of your grandpa. My grandpa. You remind me of my grandpa. And he's been. Uh, he's had Alzheimer's for how long? He doesn't have Alzheimer's. My grandma might though. Oh. <laughs> Oh, I was. I'm sorry. I feel bad now. The direction of this conversation is like Homestuck. Yeah. Because by the time you. It makes me sad? Okay, so there's an element of sadness in the Homestuckness. Oh, well, if you get attached to the characters, don't even get me started if you get attached to the characters. Okay. Because if you get attached to the characters, everybody dies at least once. Everybody dies at least once. Well, it's hard for me to get worked up if you get a second shot at death after dying, but all right, I'll give it to you. I mean, this isn't like the this isn't like the helper cube thing, okay? I mean, it's it's really confusing because there's so many alternate timelines. You have no idea what's going on. You can't keep up. Okay. And all right. So it's like following Marvel comics. Okay. Yeah, I try <laughs> it's like trying. To it's like trying to follow. <laughs> A unicorn, because you're never gonna find the unicorn. It's like all right, that went that, that I like that line. I think that's good. It's like trying to follow a unicorn. All right. It's like trying to follow a unicorn, you're never going to find one. Okay. Oh. There's no story. There's a storyline. I, I shouldn't say there's no storyline. 
But it gets so confusing, you forget the storyline. Okay. So there really is no point in trying to explain it. All right. Pinkie Pie, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, extra credit for Pinkie Pie for basically bringing in this philosophy of Sartre and existentialism. Um, a good no-exit reference is always worthwhile. Um, and, um, all right, Japanese schoolgirl. Um, I would like to clarify that the universe is composed of a frog with cancer. <laughs> oh, you so have my attention. It is a very large frog, sir. His name is Billius Slick. Wait, say that again, Billius Slick? Billius Slick. All right, this is, this is so much better than the Jack Noir, which I think he just like was bored, okay. I, I can spell it if you would like. That's okay, um, I, I can, I, I, that is one skill that journalism has endowed me with, <laughs> the, the ability to misspell. There are other things, but the frog is the important part. Okay. Um, would you like me to explain the zodiacs as well? I'm, you know, it's your shot at fame, which is really sad, <laughs> um, but, you may explain as you wish, Superman whose head is in a cup. <laughs> yeah, I've, heard, I've said that so often. Uh, um, cancer is named Car Cat, um, somewhat unoriginally, um, and he is very angry and supposedly small. Um, <laughs> so it's like kind of Sergeant, Car you know, Sergeant Frog situation. Yes. <laughs> I can refer to it. Um, and um, Ares is dead. And um, the Spoiler Taurus. <laughs> <laughs> she, she died of cancer, all right. No, she did not die of cancer, sir. She, she died of Libra. She died of, <laughs> she died of Leo. She died of Scorpio. That makes more sense, all right. Although, I would have given him big props for killing someone for, from Libra. All right. Um, the next one, I think, is Horus. And um, Horus is kind of a, a, um, a little bitch. Excuse my language. Um, you can use that word. I can't. That's fine. Um, and Gemini um, has somewhat a split personality. Oh, there's an original idea. Yeah. <laughs> about it myself. Um, and Nepeta, um, sorry, uh, the, um, Leo is uh, a furry. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> All right, I've, I've spent like 52 years avoiding this phrase, but kids these days. Okay. Um, Virgo is um, a vampire and also gay. <laughs> All right. All right. That is so cliche. Libra, uh, Libra is um, represents blind justice. Um, Scorpio is pretty cool. Um, Do we agree? Is Scorpio cool? Scorpio is a B word. All right. <laughs> I, you know, it's always, it, it's 50-50, you know, somebody finds the, the cool person to be cool and the other people find them to be the B word, it's okay. I'm not joking, I've killed thousands of people. Okay. Yeah. All right. Sagittarius is very sweaty. Um, <laughs> you know, I found that to be true in life as well. My dog's not sweaty. Your dog is not sweaty. Your dog doesn't need to be involved in this conversation. Um, I'm really disturbed that you know the zodiac sign of your dog. Does your dog go to singles bars and try and pick other dogs up? Hey, what's your sign, baby? Mr. So 70s, you just got extra points for me using that reference. Okay. Oh, um, Capricorn is a very dangerous juggalo. Um, they're very, very dangerous. I, yeah, I think I gotta give you a bamp on that one because I don't think Insane Clown Posse was around back in I those days. I the juggalo culture, which is proud and brave and long-standing, started with Insane Clown Posse, but it is also very possible that it started after 1995, so I will concede that point. Thank you. Hey, 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 hey. No questioning who she likes, all right? Okay. Um... Aquarius is kind of a neckbeard, and... 
Again, that is so true in real life. I think you're about to get a candy corn rammed in your ear. Okay, now Japanese schoolgirl, I am going to ask you to pass the pass the baton. You've done a fine job, but okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen, Japanese schoolgirl. Wow, Insane Clown Posse was 1989. Yeah, I'm really depressed about the human race. <laughs> Okay. Um, surfer dude. Oh, I'm sorry. Elvis surfer dude. Let me start out by saying that a lot of the reason that people read Homestuck is because... Wait, you have an accent? Yes. This is cheating. No, it's not. Yes. No, it's not. You know Americans can't resist British accents. We are going to crown you or something. You know we feel inferior. It doesn't matter that it was 225 years ago and that we had to bail you out of two world wars. You know we get nervous. We lost the Revolutionary War, so we got You know we have inferiority. All right, and that's a great job on your ears, by the way. Thank you. All right. Okay, so let me start out by saying that a lot Cheater. of- Cheater. <laughs> but the reason a lot of us read Homestuck is because drugs will kill us. What? <laughs> um, can I point one? Th I just want to say two words to you. Keith Richards. <laughs> Your point is wrong. Thank you, thank you. Yes, if sex, drugs, and rock and roll killed you, somebody, you have to explain Keith Richards to me. All right, thank you. So, um... <laughs> Oh, good, I got her. <laughs> She's like, why did that look? I could try to explain to you the plot, but it would basically be like me trying to explain to you the plot of Titanic, having never seen Titanic. Which, of course, would be a good it's thing. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I, pretty much it's, you know, it's the world's worst, it's the world's largest metaphor, so, you know. <laughs> Somebody agrees. Yeah. Oh, I stole that from The Onion. It's not mine. Oh, you read it too? The Onion? Yes. Absolutely. You've said, you, yeah, all right. You got, you, you haven't mentioned it yet, so you haven't been bad. All right, keep going. I really... Shit <laughs> So the Homestuck is a boring bumper sticker. Let me explain to you. Let me explain to you this way. Um, Mr. American Journalist Man. <laughs> Oh, now we're going to call me an American. I didn't know it was going to get personal that quickly. I've lived here for 52 years and I'm a journalist. You want me to take it as a compliment? Okay, I grew up under Johnson, Nixon. Oh, that's I'm sorry. Okay. I'm so sorry. Reagan. All right. I actually, I actually liked the Ford administration. That's how bad my childhood was. That explains a lot. <laughs> That's what she said is also acceptable. All right. When you were younger, yeah. <laughs> if we, if, if we can all imagine it. When corn cobs walk the earth. Yes. Uh, when you were younger, yeah, and one of your mates went to a party. And right. They had the most incredible time. Things happened that you would not believe. You know. Somebody, yeah, we did a lot of lying. Somebody horse down the stairs. You know, people were jumping off of the roof with parachutes made out of plastic bags, whatever. Like just crazy things that you would never believe. He recounts that story to you. You don't believe it, do you? You have to experience it yourself. Not to mention that Homestead was written after 1995. And if it's nothing like anything before, how could I possibly explain it to you using references from before 1995? Yeah, existential. Um, <laughs> metaphor, simile, of it's course you can. <laughs> <laughs> you were doing fine until you wandered off into logic and rhetoric, okay? 
<laughs> you tried to make a, you tried to try to defend the whole 1995 rule, and it, I mean, I, you know, I can explain Shakespeare without making a single reference to 1995. Not, you think that made sense? It's not a true like masterpiece. It's no, uh, I don't even know who said Ulysses, but it's no Ulysses. I promise you, it's no Shakespeare. You need you. It's just the cluster fuck of things that teenagers like. We called that rock and roll high school yeah. when I was oh, young. Yeah. Essentially, that's what it is, and you need to experience it for yourself. All right. I'm sorry. Elvis Surfer Girl, thank you very much. Please, I. God bless America. Oh. <laughs> Someone has to. All right, and am I right about her cheating with the accent? Am I right? You know, you're just like, oh, you have an accent. Oh. You have a puppy, too, don't you? Okay. Yes, bloody waitress. Hi. Hello. I'm going to be wearing candy corn on my head tomorrow, so. All right. Bloody waitress with candy corn on the side. Gotcha. <laughs> I'm just wondering where you are so far in understanding this. Oh, a good two to three sentences past where I was when I walked in, so don't worry about that. Um, so, you know, just, I think we can assume that I got the RPG, the universe, the non sequiturs, um, and my memory doesn't go much longer than that anyway, so, yeah. Seems so. All right. Um, you just have to understand that if you ever decide to read this comic, that it will have whole novels of conversations that are very, very interesting. All right, what is interesting about them? There's a lot of you know, insults, mostly thrown by heart hat. Okay, a lot of insults, so it's yeah. Christmas at my parents. It's very, it's very inventive. Like, All right, Thanksgiving, too. <laughs> he comes up with a lot of new things that you've never heard before, and you might pick up some of that stuff. Okay, new things I haven't heard before. Okay. It's always interesting to learn new things. It's interesting to learn new things, but that means I have something else goes away. You don't understand. <laughs> it's the Homer Simpson thing. I can learn new things, and one thing else goes away. Yeah, you're and cool. <laughs> that's what I said. I'm just old. What do you think? Oh, wait, that's a brutal attack. Have I been pretending anything else? That's the lamest insult going. Oh, you're just old. Oh, great. Yeah. Did any Was anyone not aware that I was an old idiot? <laughs> oh, look. Nobody's raising their hands. All right. I didn't know you were old. <laughs> I didn't know you were an idiot. You didn't know I was old. You think this is hair color? All right. Wait, wait, wait. We're interrupting. We're interrupting. Bloody waitress. Bloody waitress. So about the whole forgetting thing. That's mostly where you are during the comic. You will read further in because there's just so much to like read. It's too much. Okay. I'm gonna have to interrupt you because we're about to hit the speed section. We are running out of time, and at my age, that's important. So, please hand the baton on to um, the patriotic person behind you. You each have two minutes. Okay, first of all, I'm not going to explain it like it's Oprah's book club, and I'm not going to explain it like it's Rolling Stones, unfathomable, awesome. But I'm basically going to put the Cliff Notes version of it. Yes. By curious kids in their preteens, a bunch of other great kids, chess piece people, <laughs> dreams and magic, a very big frog, and some other crazy bullshit. That's pretty much it. Okay. With time to spare, please hand, hand the baton on. Wait, wait, wait. When were you born? What year? Long after this concert, t shirt would have been. Okay. How many albums do you have? Of this particular band? All of them? This is actually just a question of curiosity. Do you smoke pot? <laughs> no. 
<laughs> These are exclusive, mutually exclusive points then. All right. It is not possible. <laughs> Wish You Were Here is the new state, mo state song of Colorado. All right. That's um, um, so. Yes, shine on you crazy diamond, you listened because why? <laughs> all right, I would accept something besides pot. I mean, that you know, but uh, all right. okay, you have it. Okay, so you're snorting Ritalin. Okay, <laughs> Mr. Floyd, but I have no idea what that is, Mr. Floyd. All right. Um, I would like to add yeah, but to our former patriot, pretty much a Jack the Ripper who wants to kill anything and everything because. <laughs> well, that didn't exactly open my mind. It does feel like a Pink Floyd song. All right. That it does. Um, but yeah, you know, Pink Floyd songs equals Homestuck. That. Yeah, I go with that metaphor, with that parallel, rather. I was alive during the 70s in the Pink Floyd bloom. Uh, it was an ugly time. Um, the Ramones were, were just, you know, we didn't get to hear the Ramones until, you know, at the time, and we had to put up with, God, you have no idea when the eight-minute guitar solo was introduced to America. It, I mean, I swear to God, it was as bad as the Great Depression. Oh, oh. I know, I know. You're talking to a guitarist who has played eight-minute guitar solos. Speaking of taking points off your marks, <laughs> is your name O Django Reinhardt? Do you know who Django Reinhardt is? I know A Reinhardt. No, okay. No. For you scoring in the audience, that's the greatest jazz guitarist in history. All right. <laughs> Only had three fingers on one hand, so you might want to look into getting rid of some ears. <laughs> All right, back to Homestuck. Um, when did that come in? <laughs> um, anyway, it's a lot like a mixture of... <laughs> Wait, you got two minutes. A Tolkien book with all the ends of style on. And then... Everybody spends most of the thing walking to Mordor. All right. <laughs> Walking to something that they never go to, yes. And Douglas Adams. All the randomness that doesn't seem to be there, but eventually somehow it fits in, and you say, oh, I remember that thing from however many. Okay, thank you. We have, my summation would be here that Homestuck is Pink Floyd, Douglas Adams. <laughs> Um, bad guitar solos. Um, okay. Uh, first of all, I'm cosplaying a character that's from the 80s, so therefore I get to say my name. I am Noriaki Takumi. And, um... Yeah, but you're just gonna be 80s guy. Uh, all right, so um, you got two minutes. A lot of people would say I've got that, a lot of prizes, so you got to get. get right. uh, a lot of people would say that Homestuck is a silly story about a bunch of silly kids doing silly things. That's um, you've just great. described most of American literature. Thank yeah, that's you. Experience, that's experienced by silly people. I'm sorry, Mr. Mr. Scary Guy with the sunglasses, but we we this is our final contestant. Right. Sorry. But, uh, that is not an apt description of Homestuck. Homestuck is, in essence, a view. Why did everybody give up on the interpretive dance? Okay, keep going. <laughs> I, I tried. Homestuck is, in essence, a vehicle. Homestuck is a view. A it's a vehicle. It's a vehicle. For something called... Is it a shipping. Ford Pinto? <laughs> it's, it's a vehicle. <laughs> a Yugo. It's a vehicle for something called shipping. We call that FedEx in my world. Well, this shipping is quite a bit No, no, you call it Federal Express. Oh, uh, the GPS does. Uh, shipping is when a fan from a fan base um, sees two characters and says, now what would happen if they were to like make out or something? <laughs> oh, so this is slash fiction. All right, thank you. 
All right. I am, are you, you have one more sentence. I am being told by the great powers that be i got to wrap this up because also, actually somebody does come on after me. I've also been told that, um, I mean, I'm not done with home stuff, but I, I, I'm not caught up with home stuff. I think I'm not done with home stuff. Um, at this rate. All right, come on, one more sentence. Okay. Um, well, I've been told it gets better with time. Um, yeah, and I've been trying to, I've been trying to say that for years, and nobody has believed me. Uh, you could ask her. Uh, she's over there. What do you mean? Who do you think is keeping an eye on me? All right. All right. So come on, one more sentence. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, 80s guy. All right, our first prize of the night goes to uh, Panda Lady. Yes, you get some circus peanuts. All right, who else is harassing me? Okay. All right. <laughs> None of the rest of you were very harassing. What was wrong with you? Okay, I am going to go with... Senor, por favor. <laughs> Senor One Eye. All right. And the first bag of corn nuts goes to... Corn nuts. What You're going to find out. <laughs> Um, it is going to go to So 70s. All right. And Japanese girl. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Corn nuts. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so as we have all determined beforehand. Oh, God. It's battery acid. It's trash. Milady Blue, first prize three bottles of Moxie. Thank you. Kathy, second prize three bottles of Diet Moxie. Distinctively different. Thank you all very much. I'm certainly older than when I came in. <laughs> bravo, bravo. Great job.